to another segment of 30 minutes with jesus i hope you had a lovely lovely week i did well without wasting much time we are going to get right into it by appreciating the lord for this day because a lot of people did not wake up today but you and i did and he, it's a reason, a huge reason to give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, so, Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, eternal rock of ages, we bless and magnify your holy name. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. Oh, Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for the preservation of life. For the protection of it thank you for our loved ones our families thank you for for our leaders thank you for the church for the body of christ today O jehovah even as we are going to listen to your word i ask that you use me as your oracle open the heart of the people let them receive it with thanksgiving and have the cause to give you thanks and praise and seek your face which is the most important thing for them to be able to turn away from their ways and stay focused and fix their gaze on you that they might not miss your appearance to you be all the glory to you be all the adoration father breathe upon your word today and anything that wants to stand in the way of proclaiming the gospel today be arrested by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father thank you king of kings thank you lord of all thank you ancient of days in jesus precious name we pray amen so folks today's topic is titled what god hates According to the layman, hate is a feeling of intense dislike towards something or towards someone. Or it can be seen as, as, as um, to despise. Hate can also be seen as to despise, to detest, and to love. So, you take your pick you know so uh, and it de also depends on what context you are going to use the word or the term hate for so that's why i said take your pick so in the scriptures we we find it more explanatory that that is how the word or the term hate was used and in what context it was used so let us open our bible to proverb chapter 6 verse 16 to 19 so um i'm reading from the english standard version that is esv there are six things that the lord hates seven that are an abominable to him first is the hosty eyes a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises that devises wicked plans feet that make haste to run to evil and a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among brothers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, I will not take much of your time because um, I almost did not uh, preach today. Hence, because of the commitment I have between myself and my maker that is why i'm sitting here today you know proclaiming the gospel so
So I am really strong today. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like saying, I don't want to confess it. That's why I say I am strong, not weak. So um, it is interesting. But I know one thing for sure. Before the end of this message today, my strength will be restored in full. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, you know, it is interesting to know that the Creator Himself has the best sense of humor, you know, and really strong feelings. And he's very, he is very down to earth. That, that is how I, I, I see in this, uh, what this passage we just read is, or today's topic is all about. It shows you that God himself has strong feelings. He has sense, good sense of humor. In fact, the best sense of humor, he is very down to earth. When someone is down to earth, that means he tells you his mind. You know, he's so open to, to you. That's what it means. He takes the time to let us know what he's like. And that is how God is like. And he also takes the time out to tell us what he likes and dislikes. And then... That is how to show us how much he loves us and also how much he wants a relationship with you and I. Praise the Lord. Do you know that some of us, you know, do not really know everything that our, our spouse is like or dislike? We might know somewhat, but we, we don't know everything, you know. Some of us was done, but God told us in His Word both what He likes and what He dislikes. Praise the Lord. So today we will explore some things that God likes and no, sorry, we will explore some things that God dislikes and briefly touch on the things He likes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible. In Proverbs tells us that um, that there are seven things that God hates. That's what the book of Proverbs in in, in chapter Proverbs chapter just give me a second. Proverbs chapter six from verse sixteen to nineteen. That is our foundational scripture today. That is what it tells us that. Uh, that God, uh, it tells us that there are seven things God hates. But if you search the scripture carefully, you will realize that they, that they are more. There are more, you know. But what is the most important thing that we need to stay focused on is God is the is loving God. That is the thing that we need to really stay focused on, you know, in our lives. You know, on a daily basis, is the love that we have for God. We should focus on that. And as well, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Those are the two important things. Everyone who is running this race should be more careful to attain. You know? Yeah, so... Um, why because when we stay focused on love you will not be capable of these other things these other things that is these things that god hates you will not be capable because once you your your gaze is fixated on the maker and that's it loving him he teaching you how to love others around you you will not remember if you are so if you hate someone or if you are going to lie against someone you will not all those things will not even come to your thought at all you know so um you see like i said because your mind is fixated on love and loving others as the bible says in proverb 8 13 that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. That means 
the fear of the Lord doesn't mean that like you being scared of the Lord. It's like you reverencing Him, you respecting Him, and you loving Him. Yeah, is to hate evil. That means if you love God, you will hate evil. You will hate what He hates, because it is that love that kind of shapes you and changes your mindset and your mentality. You know, you begin to see things the way God sees them. You know, that is why they say. That uh, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, the things God hates, what are they? I made a list of them. That is from the verse we just read. Proverbs chapter 6 from 16 to 99. Yeah. So, what are the things that God hates? Number one is... Hosty eyes. What do we mean by hosty eyes? Haughty eyes. People who are that is people who have a proud look, who look down on others because they feel that they are better than others. People like that, God does not like them. Especially those who think that they are a better race than the other race. God does not like all those things. So, and then people who believe in, in, in self-effort, who worship themselves, who feel superior, people who are egoic and give credit to themselves for all their accomplishments, such people are found without respect for God or anything that is seen as a higher power or authority over them. You see, in Daniel chapter 5, verse 20 to 21, it says, But when his heart was lifted, this is now Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon at the time. He's an example of where that he's a, he's a guy that actually, a king at the time that fit the bill of what today's topic. So he, has a, he is a king who his personality, is in, in fact, is pride, you know. So I'm going to read from verse 20 to 21 in Daniel chapter 5. It says, But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he, he dealt proudly. Because this is, he is a proud person. Because he hardened his heart, God helped him to harden it more, you know. So... It depends on your choice, what you want. Whatever you want, God will help you to, you know, to, to make it tougher. <laughs> you can ask Pharaoh about that. Anyway, so he was brought down from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him. He was driven from among the children of mankind and his mind was made like that of a beast. And his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was fed grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Usually when proud people don't learn how to humble themselves, God humbles them, period. <laughs> By force. <laughs> By force, you know. So, just like uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he was thinking he's king and he, that all his accomplishment was from him. He has the power and then he, it was by his own strength and by his own power that he could accomplish what he had. That's what he was thinking. And God said, okay, we'll see about that. And then God made him into an animal, like his mind was made like that of a beast and his dwelling was with wild donkeys so that you know God kind of changed his um, let's say if he was craving for ice cream chocolates and pizza and what have you and rice and, and, and chips now he begins to crave for grass you know that's what God did to him, to, to humble him. That was why God did that, because of his pride. So, 
And so we should learn to humble ourselves like Jesus, who is the Son of God, the Creator, you know, and the, the, the Prince of Peace, um, a royalty by birth and by right, who came down to us and lived like a poor man so that you and I can be rich, you know, and nobody knew who he was, whom he is. Nobody knew because there was no pride found in Jesus. Nobody knew if he was, you know, the heir to the throne of God. Nobody knew because he humbled himself. He brought himself so low, in fact, to the lowest class at that time, you know, in the days he walked upon this earth, which I know he still walks upon this earth, you know, till date and it's going to walk on it forever so yeah when he lived like jesus jesus mary's son he never the proud was never associated pride was never associated with him so we should learn so with regards to pride or haughtiness we should emulate jesus his example is the best to add hair to praise the lord so another thing that God hates is a lying tongue with regards to lying tongue. Do you remember Ananias and Sapphira? Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5 verse 1 to 11. It says, but a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and with his wife's knowledge he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it. Um, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart? You know, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself parts of the proceeds from the land? That is, parts of the money that he sold from the land, you know, that he owned. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? That's what they are saying to him. Shebi! The land now your own, uh -huh. and you chose to sell it. You know what I'm trying to say is that they are telling him that that land doesn't it belong to you, Ananias? But you are the one because you have seen the marvelous movement of this Jesus, and you want to be part of it, and you have believed in him, and you want to do his will, and you nobody coerced you to sell your land. But that's what Peter was trying to tell him here. It's been with you. It's remained with you, and you did uh, didn't did did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? That's just what I'm saying. Why is it that you have contrived this contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but God. You see. Then and oh, sorry, when Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Verse seven. After all, after an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her. Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And, and she said, yes, so much. But Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. Hmm. That is what lies can do, you know, when you are lying to the holy spirit you know when the, the the young men came in they found her dead and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband and great fear came upon them the whole church and upon all who heard of these things by the way i'm reading from the esv esv english standard version yeah so this is to show you why god detests lies there is no small or big lie. Lie is a lie. A lie is a lie. God detests lies because of the ways the enemy injects false thoughts into an individual. The person begins to doubt what God says concerning his or her life. 
So please try your possible best to stop lying because it will definitely take your life. That is, it will definitely kill you and then you end up in hell, you know. And then we are here again. Another thing that the Lord detests is the hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood is not only abortion. Yes, not ab aborting a baby is not is sorry aborting a baby is part of it, and God detests such. Another is killing someone because you want what the, the what the person has. In Second Samuel chapter eleven, from verse fourteen to seventeen, in the morning. It says, in the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, he said, R -r 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 in the letter he wrote, set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him. Then he may be struck down and die. And as Joab was besieging the city he assigned uriah to the place where he knew there were violent men and the men of the city came out and fought with joab and some of the servants of david among the people fell uriah the hittite also died mm. but why did this happen whenever i read about david i always laugh you know why because the guy is a nice guy He's nice, he's smart, and very, very randy guy. And he is a very likable person. Most of all, he he knows his God so much and love his God to bits, to be honest with you. You know, God David is one of those guys who really know how to get the attention of God, I'm telling you. But David shed an innocent blood because of a woman, Bishida. The Hittite's wife. So God said to for God said for this reason, David, the sword will not depart from your house. This is to let you know that uh, no one gets away with anything. No, nobody, believer or non-believer, even David, the man after God's own heart, did not get away with what he did because God is not a respecter of persons. David is been seen as the man after God's own heart, but he never got away with the with the crimes he committed, you know, by stealing Uriah's wife, you know. He was watching her, taking her bath. People might think it's a one day thing, maybe he was just but no, this if you read the Bible, if you study the Bible carefully, he knows her. It's not someone he just met overnight. No, he used to probably look at her, but he knows her. And don't forget who her father is, you know. And, and then he is. Do, those are people who go into the palace. They are not just people that don't come to the palace. They come to the palace every day. They probably were raised around that palace, so they he knew her. But um, he, he that day it was just that fateful day. He decided to to do what the you know the unspeakable sleep with her and even pregnant her in the process and to cover what he did he had to kill her husband in order to marry her so god said oh you think i didn't see this fine you your sword as in the sword will never depart from your hand that that is why absalom his son you know became mm, he, he, disobedient to his father and became a rebel trying to kill his dad and stuff like that so and david paid for it he did not go scot-free you know so nobody gets away even if someone hurts you today or took something that is not that is not theirs and it's yours just hand them over to god because the bible says vengeance is of the lord nobody gets away with anything believer or non-believer nobody even if you don't see the results now wait give it time it will catch up it will definitely catch up if david the man after god's own hand did not get away with anything you who do you think will nobody gets away with anything so 
that is that and then the a heart what god despises as well is a heart that devises wickedness that is wicked plans you know the heart that devises wicked plan is a witch is a witch kind of heart is a witchery kind of heart because jealousy springs from envy envy brings um sorry jealousy brings envy envy brings hatred hatred results into malice malice results into rebellion and rebellion now gives birth to witchcraft so this is the story of jezebel and the, and king ahab and Naboth. so you should try to read the story yourself in first kings chapter 20 first kings chapter 21 and 22 you will get the whole story you will understand why God hates a wicked heart or a heart that devises evil plans or evil, wicked plans. So what happened at the end of the story? They got what they deserved. That is Second Kings chapter 9, you know, 37. You should read it for yourself. You should understand that, um, you should understand what... Jezebel, what transpired between Jezebel, King Ahab, and Nobat. You know, read it yourself. It's an assignment. <laughs> so, God detests a uh, feet that makes his to run to evil. Those who patronize native doctors, witch doctors, all courts, gangs, all those people that belong to such things, you know, God does not like people like he doesn't like them he despises he detests them example of this is so in first samuel chapter 28 verse 7 it says then Saul said to his servant seek out for me a woman who is a medium that i may go to her and inquire of her and his servant said to him behold there is a medium at endo that is the witch of endo this is Samuel consulting a witch to find out what, because since he he disobeyed God and the spirit of God departed from him, he's confused. He doesn't know again what God is, what is happening in God's calendar, because now the spirit of God is upon David, you know, and and that was the reason why he went to seek for another part to know what's going on you know what is god saying what is the plan he he asked the witch to resurrect uh, the late prophet samuel oh, and when the prophet was resurrected what did he say first the prophet cautioned him not to have done what he did like consulting a witch that was the first re um, rebuke and the second one was was a gospel truth he told you say you see by this time tomorrow you and i will be here <laughs> so that means samuel was telling saul that he's going to join him in the land of the dead that means samuel is going to die okay so saul finally got what he deserved the next day and another thing god detests is a false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among his brethren the story of jezebel too illustrates what god meant here because it has to do with a land dispute yeah you need to, i don't want to tell you the story this is an assignment you just go and read it for yourself and know it's about land okay a small piece of land so it fits the bill here you know and um so yeah it illustrates god what god meant here and uh, because it has to do with a land dispute and god is very particular of Je about um um geographical location israel for example is another example and also the devil who is the accuser of the brethren like let's say example the the you know when the bible said that when the sons of god came to present themselves before god uh, satan came as well and um, that was where 
he started uh, uh, having the conversation with God saying God told him have you considered my servant um, what is his name Job and he was like ah, are you not the one who put a hedge around him so that nobody can penetrate him take out the hedge and see if Job will know you know so you know the story so and this is what the devil does every day he accuses you and I in front of God every day look at her uh, today she said that she's uh, having headache that's why she didn't want to preach is you not um, the person you're calling your daughter of Zion <laughs> she says she's having headache not knowing that it is the devil who inflicted this headache on me but I did not did I sleep she I'm preaching now so devil I owe you nothing stop accusing me mm -hmm. so I'm just giving you example of what the devil does every day accusing pointing accusing finger on you and I you know so yeah and then um, the Palestine and Israel land dispute uh, these are many more uh, you know things that God does not like you know that little land Israel that everybody's trying to kill their selves for you know that land belongs to God. I don't know why people will not just allow Israel to be. They are, they are the people that God gave that land to. You know? Let them have their land. And I don't know why. Are there not other places that people can take to be or conspicate for themselves? Take for themselves and do whatever. Why must it be Israel? Please, Lord have mercy on us. Wanting what some what belongs to somebody, you want it by all means. Uh -uh. Who does that? It's not the devil and his cohorts. So, without saying more, if you really want to be on God's side, you must hate all this and many more, which we will discuss next week. Why are we even taking all this? things that go i think because of this season is a halloween season and in order to well next week i know that the lord wants us to talk about why we should not even practice or be partakers of that self festival called halloween so i don't know how it's going to go but i know that the lord wants me to talk about that next week and to discuss more of the things he dislikes so halloween halloween is part of it so i pray that you connect next week to hear why you really should not participate in that uh, practice or festival whatever so in order to be called a son or daughter of zion you must learn how to love god and love your neighbors as yourself matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 when you do this you will not have to worry about the rest hence my counsel to you you know so i have so i have um one question for you or do you want jesus i remember this this friend of mine her little son always before he goes to bed he always said to her mommy give me jesus so what he meant as in or what he means by saying mommy give me Jesus," means mommy pray for us before we sleep oh so adorable that boy anyway so if you want jesus here i am today to give you jesus like that little special boy who always tells his mom give me jesus so say this after me lord jesus I come before your throne of grace and I ask for your mercy. I ask that you forgive me my sins because today, Lord, I have recognized my faults. I have recognized my errors. And today I have come, Lord, that you so that you wash away my sins and cleanse me from every trace of unrighteousness and from every trace of iniquity. Today, Lord, I am confessing to you that I know that you died on the cross of Calvary and you rose after three days for me so Lord today come into my life be the Lord of my life 
and make me yours, your new child today. Thank you, Jesus, for making me yours. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So if you have said that prayer, welcome to the family of Yeshua and Mashiach. And I'm going to leave you with this. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Peace, peace, peace. Take care of yourself and see you next week.